How you been? How you doing? I'm very good. Karate champion. Yeah. So you've been training karate for how long? I'm in karate for 18 years now. 18 exactly. years. And now 28, I start with 10 years. Yeah. When I was 10 years. And you're still training karate? Yeah, I'm still karate. I heard Bosnia has one of the strongest teams in Europe in karate. Is that true? That's true. We had been maybe two times uh, the, the, the second place in the world. Yeah? Yes. Yeah, so, so. And uh, karate is the, the most popular sport in this country. Uh -huh. So, uh, what my father, he passed away in 2006. Uh, actually, I, I was that uh, 17 years old, and it is very hard attack for my family because our father, he was number one, and he was just working, and all the money is coming from him. And, and I had one mother and uh, sisters, two sisters. And uh, when he passed away, I started to think about death. And I, and I saw everybody will die because actually at that time I thought my father he will never die he's like like my God you know how did he die in a car accident car accident but what's interesting he was a professional driver and he he was driving uh, he had a car license for a, a truck for uh, so heavy duty cars so a car it, it's not, not nothing for him and subhanallah take him from this world in a car accident. Mm. So, and at that time, I just, first, my first words I, I told at that time when I hear he, he passed away was Alhamdulillah. I don't know how. You just said, thank God. Thank God, just thank God. What, what myself, nobody told me you should now pray, you should do this. Just, I, I, I start to follow my heart and I start to, to read the book about death. I see many people are dying and something should be on the other world. And step by step, you know, I, I, I was trying to be honest to, to God, to Allah. And I, I, I ask him every day, please show me the, the right way. And Alhamdulillah, step by step, you know, I, I feel more comfortable. And I didn't know, at that time, I didn't know how to pray, nothing. I just went to the masjid when it was Juma. Salatul Juma, and I'm, I was just looking people, you know, how they're praying. I'm just following them, and wudu. I didn't know anything about Islam. At that time, this was my my worst point in my life. But actually, now I see that was my best, some the best thing what happened in my life. And uh, how was life before then, like without Islam? Uh, during my 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 life, during my father was was alive. We didn't have any contact with Islam, so I lived in a family. Uh, let's let's say, uh, family. Everything was open. I I, I, I was I was in the national team of, of Boston karate, so we we're just traveling each weekend. We we're going some somewhere outside Boston, so it's just party, party, you know, party. But to be honest, never at that time I feel comfortable with myself. You know, this was just the moments during I have I. Have, I'm doing the party with my friends. At that time, I'm laughing. But when I come home back, to be honest, I start to, 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 to cry because I didn't feel comfortable. Everybody say, you know, that, that's good what you're doing. You know, you're like good guy. But actually, I didn't feel good. Something's missing? It's big missing. When my father, he, when he died, I, I, I just recognized that I will die. Yeah. And this is not the, the way I should live. And I, I, I feel that I should come back to, to my Lord. Mm -hmm. you know, this is the only way. And I start, but to be honest, when I start to pray, you know, uh, my challenge was uh, the Fajr, Fajr, Salat al-Fajr. And one time, it was two days before Ramadan, I completed all five. Uh, so now you have, you are implementing Islam. You're researching, you're studying, but now you talk about some of the challenges, struggles. It wasn't just a, a, a walk in the park, was it? <laughs> of course not. No. So at that time, I was, to be honest, 
one of the most important uh, members in our family. Our family is a huge family. And when I was a, a, a nasty guy, you know, when I started to practice Islam, I didn't have a father. So I, I was living with my mother and two sisters. And the next five or six years, I was the worst guy in the family. So nobody, uh, you know, the family was giving me uh, some support, like money support, you know, they, they cut that. So, you know, my, my mother, after maybe one year, she told me, I cannot let you, uh, you're praying, doing all the, the Islamic th things, leave my house. Why? Just because I start to be good. Just because I was praying, you know. But hold on, before you said you were a party guy, yeah. you're hanging out, the nightclubs going out. Did they have any objection to that? Nothing. That's crazy, isn't it? Of course. And, you know, at that time, this was the, the, the most tough period in my life. Yeah. But actually, from the other side, this was my most beautiful part of the life because I was never so satisfied with myself. Mm. Because I, I, I knew I'm close to my, my, my Lord. Okay, so they kicked you out. They, they kicked me out. Yeah. Mm. And actually, at that time, I was alone. Nobody was with me. Not my friends, not my family, my mother. I was walking on the street, you know, I was hungry, no money. To be honest, I sleep on, on the road, you know. Wait, wait, she kicked you out? She kicked me out. You were kicked out, just yes. driven out of your own just, home? Just like that. So wait, your parents, technically, they're like, of, are they, because from the former Yugoslavia, you had many people who were communists, so they left religion, yes. right? Yes. So were they of that mindset? Same, same, same. Same, same. same like so that. they're like atheists? Yes, like atheists. Yeah, okay. And we had, like one one meeting, family meeting, a big family meeting, and I, I was such, I was surprised when they invite me because I was now kicked out. But now they called you somehow because the family is getting together. Yes. So you got an invite. Yes. Right? Okay. And maybe the the mother is more soft, right? She's she's maybe missing you. She yeah. won't tell you. She wants to see you. Maybe she told them because you know. Yeah. I, I, I wanted my son be here with yeah. us. And then one guy from the family, one member, he told, let us hear Damir, what he, what he. Now they want you to recite. Me, yes. Yeah. And, okay, I accept it. And I start to, to read Quran, uh, two pages I read. And, you know, set for six years, I had all these problems with the family and I get very emotional. And of course you're reading Quran and I start crying, you know. يوم هم بارزون لا يخفى على الله منهم شيء لمن الملك اليوم لله الواحد القهار اليوم تجزى كل نفس بما كسبت لا ظلم اليوم إن الله سريع and subhanAllah, at that time, when I finished, I was reading, reading two pages, and when I finished, I just started watching the people around me, everybody was crying. And my mother, she, she cried, she, she came to me and started to hug me. My mother, she didn't hug me maybe for five years, you know, and very emotional moment for me and for all the families, and they start then to shout. You told this Damir, see he is reading, he is a good guy. And subhanAllah, for that time, Allah changed the situation in my life. I get married, I get a good job, and now 80% of the family, they are, they are practicing Islam, you know. And when I see my family before and now, of course, this is Allah opened the way for them, but the Quran at that time changed everything. And Alhamdulillah, now, you know, my mother, my sisters, practicing, they are wearing a hijab, you know, so oh, yeah. every, yes, everything is, is different, totally different. MashaAllah. Uh, they're actually all, uh, the majority practicing, right? Yeah, majority. Amazing. SubhanAllah. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, my mother, she's praying better than me now, you know, <laughs> longer time. She, when she pray, she, Alhamdulillah. And, now, what if you gave up? Many people, because Allah tells us in the Quran, do you think that you'll be left alone? I'm just saying, I believe, and you won't be tested, but you never gave up. Never. Yeah. And now, how's life now for you? 
Now it's, it's totally different, you know. At that time I was alone, I had nobody, no money. Not my friends, not my family, my mother. Now I'm, I have three of my company, three companies. Uh, I'm doing the construction business, property business, real estate, you know. Alhamdulillah now Allah give me money, you know. I have a big family now and what was down now, it's up. You know? What do you, when you connect with people, like what advice do you give them? Uh, my advice is that uh, advice is that I have one sentence for myself. The sentence that Allah is the most important. If I want to do something which I know Allah is not satisfied, I said just to myself, Allah is the most important. And this sense uh, is everything in my life. And salah is number one because I'm now in business. I'm just working, wake up early. Just with this salah, this is my break. And five minutes, I'm taking my break. And to be honest, it's totally refreshment for, for me. Mm. You know, I'm trying in the salah to be focused in the salah. And after that, again, I'm, I'm in, in, in a business and, and salah is number one. Mm -hmm. So people who, who say, I'm Muslim, but no salah, they have a big problem. They don't know actually, they don't have that connection with the, with the Lord. And from my side, yeah. uh, I'm just thinking that maybe I'll die tomorrow. Ah, uh, death. Death. So, because my father died, and from that day, I, I think every day I will die, to be honest. And I'm doing my best to, to, to finish all my obligations at that day. And Alhamdulillah, before two years, I went first time in Hajj. And again this year in Hajj with my wife, and I'm planning not to stop. Uh, now, of course, now I have everything in my life. The, the most, most, most important thing is the, the, the Islam, and my family is number one. My mother, I'm living with my mother. My sister, sisters, they, they get married, and I will never ever leave my mother alone. I told my wife at that time when I was want to marry her, we will, we will live with, with my mother because in Islam, the mother is number one for the man. And I told her, if my mother asked me something, and you ask me something, first I will go to my mother, then I will come to you. And never ever you'll be in front of my mother. One last piece of advice for the not yet Muslims. What advice do you give for them? My advice then, because I believe I was not a Muslim, because I, uh, if you are honest yourself, you will see that you are not, you are not satisfied. Something you miss. With Islam, you will get everything. Maybe to you will happen good things, bad things, but you will always be satisfied. And this is the most important thing. You will not need anything, just you will need your Lord, and He will give you everything. So, with Islam, everything what happened to you is great, and you feel good because you have an answer of all things happened to you, and that that feeling that you're satisfied, that you feel calm, that's the most important. And nobody can tell me this money is number one. I have no money. I see money is nothing. You know, just just this feeling, this this Islam, and five times praying and be with your Lord. That that's it. I cannot, of course, uh, explain this feeling, but they should try. Yeah, they should try. You Definitely. got you got the whole world and everything to gain, and nothing to lose. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for being with us.